we singing Christmas carols? I want to know Nelly how you guys met. Kaliki, Maka, is how we thing. met? Yeah. At a bowling tournament. At a bowling alley. What is that happened? weird? I think I. She I saw remember. me and she got starstruck. No. <laughs> right? I Isn't that was how it walking <laughs> past and I don't know with whom I was with, but they just stopped and introduced me to you. To this hunk. I, an excellent bowler. I didn't know. At I've the been time bowling from high I school. I just met him. <clears throat> but yeah, he was an excellent bowler. Your dad has always had a great form and a great game. Did you get numbers back in the day? No, because I was still married to Mike. No. I, he was still married. Yeah, must have been the eight, yeah. mid 80s, late 80s. Mid 80s. 80s. Do you want my interpretation of this? Mid 80s? Because yes. apparently you're kind of vague on it, but I remember it distinctly. I can't even remember what year we got married. Yeah, I'm I know. Really bad with dates. Bad, yeah. <laughs> bad, bad. Was it 96? That's why I don't get any anniversary presents. Huh? 94 or 96? 94. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, my side, here's the story. This is the actual story because it's one of those indelible things in my mind. Okay, she was standing with her group. I actually invented the bowling tournament for her, but there was a big gap, empty space between the ski things and the golf tournament. So I said, why don't we do a bowling tournament? Fast forward, we reserved literally the whole bowling alley. That's oh, how man. popular it was. <coughs> and what I would do, I would bring a boom box to oh, the bowling. Nice. And I'd be playing some cool tunes. Our team was the best team because we had the boom box. So anyway, long story short, your mom was on this Dan Scott team, all women. I don't even remember <clears throat> that. And then I knew this gal. Tall, dark. Good looking woman. So I was going to hit on her. nails. And here was your mom. Walker. Standing behind her. she was her, a nice gal. Cute as a button with her little dimples. I was talking to Sarah and, and oh, then I noticed her huh. in the corner of my eye. And there it was. I thought, oh, wow, she's so cute. Oh, and somebody. then later on, after the bowling tournament, we all go to a bar or a dance place. Yeah and have a party, continue the party on. Of course. Yeah, so there I was, married and hitting on your mom, having said, you wanna go dance, you wanna go dance? And she go, no, no, I wanna. So uh, I had to yeah. literally drag her to the dance floor. It was pretty wild. What was he like? Yeah. Mr. Social Butterfly, that's his, that's his deal. I had extreme confidence in myself. That's what got yeah. me into trouble. I seem to have inherited that. Yep, so, you have to have some humor. I don't think we kept in touch, I think we just, saw we each other at social this, events because yeah, I was still couple. married, you were still married. <laughs> I eventually left my ex and moved in with Sarah, that gal, and then your dad ended up <clears throat> divorcing. And, and then eventually moving in together. We lived together for what? How many years? So Seven years. <clears throat> After the divorces, how did you guys start dating? Don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. If it wasn't for your mom, I'd be philandering everywhere. Otherwise, I'd be at a bar, and it was so easy for me to go up to, and you don't do that anymore. Your, your culture, bars, because we had dance bars. I mean, yeah, 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 but different. They're just a right. little different these days. So we had one literally on every corner, and I had no qualms about going up to good-looking women, asking them to dance, and start a conversation. It was very easy for me to do that. I felt very comfortable. Some people, you know, they're shy and they don't want to do that kind of stuff. And right. How, how was moving in together? I don't know. We didn't give it too much thought. Maybe you give it more thought today. Well, I was clean. He was very heartbroken <clears throat> because yeah. he was Air Force trained. Um, I was low maintenance. I wasn't high maintenance. And I can say the same for your mom too, I have to admit. And I keep on telling her, her and she to this day just says, no, no. She has natural beauty. She does not need Here makeup. I am. <laughs> Your Look mom like I is just, just got out of bed, which uh, yeah. Which is good. You don't want to wake up to a woman the next day. Go, oh my gosh. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the makeup comes yeah. off. And your mom has never been that way. I mean, I, I that's what I appreciate about her. Aww. She takes so long to get makeup on and everything else. I said, no, you don't, I don't need that. You don't need that. Did you guys live together for, what, like how many years? Probably four or five years before we got married. Okay, we were at a group vacation. We took a lot of group vacations. Now, before, before this, did you like get her parents' permission? That was another weird story too. She took me to meet her family, right? And it's probably the first time they've ever met an Asian guy. 
<laughs> Look at that. See, even your mom says that. Duh. My dad didn't say anything, but guaranteed he was. Yeah, your grandpa's raising an eyebrow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's from the old prejudice school. So the funny, one of the funny stories is Gloria was big into family reunions. She had people, relatives coming from all over the country. I was invited. I was the only Hawaiian Asian type there. And I videotaped everything. I got into people's faces <laughs> with a video camera and asked them all kinds of goofy kind of questions. Everybody had fun. I guess if I were the average person, I would feel kind of out of place. But I felt right at home. And I'm not sure it's because of my upbringing in the islands, because everybody is considered equal. And maybe it was the Air Force, so I fit right in. If you were an outsider walking in and looking at that, you would go, hey, look. They got a Japanese waiter. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about uh, the proposal. Proposal? Oh, your grandpa died in 93. And he, he actually met your mom. On the plane ride back from Hawaii to the mainland, it was almost like I heard him tell me, Alan, I almost heard him say, Alan, you have to marry Mary. And so I came back. We were, we were on a... Grand Cayman vacation, a group vacation, with a bunch of friends again. Everybody was teasing me on these drunken parties. Yeah. Hey, Al, when are you going to propose to Mary? When are you going <laughs> to propose? At one party, everybody was going, They made propose, him propose. Propose, propose, <laughs> Al, propose. They made him. Gary so they Arnold made, me, made you propose. They made me get down <laughs> on one knee and say, Mary, will you marry me? And we were all joking and we are all plastered, you know. <laughs> I never considered it serious, but no, it was the plane ride back that was the clincher. Then I just said, let's set a date. Then we set the date because before that, I there don't was even no remember date set. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we had another group vacation on our wedding. So November. The proposal was like, yeah. How long after? I don't know. I don't know. If there was any official proposal. I mean, there is just date. no sense of time for yeah, me on yeah. anything. It was just like arranging a an appointment. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, we took you to the location the last time where we got married. I don't know if North you North Shore that. at the um, Turtle, Turtle Bay, Bay Resort. Resort. We just were away from it, off to the side where he, you said you camped there with your dad? Yeah, as a, a, as a, as a family. Guy? There was this area on the North Shore called Kahuku that was all barren land. And then you ran across the beach. This was private land, so we had permission. We had to go through a gate, padlock gate. We had the combination, open the padlock. And my uncles and aunts and my cousins from Kailua and our families, we all camped there. It was an annual thing. Yeah. So I thought when we originally did this, that it would be a nice place for your mom and I to get married. And that's why how we did that. We, I found a simple little dress and shorts and aloha shirts everybody else was in and yeah yeah do you still have that dress i don't think so it was just a cotton yeah white um, cotton dress cocktail length <clears throat> um so, so the family we had, besides the 20 guests that we had from colorado the only family attending our wedding was my sister her husband um i think leanne Rainy, and royd Re, leanne and royd uh, Rennie boy. They weren't even married. Bill. Yet. Yep. My brother Bill. So the rest is history. So 28 years. Yeah. I've been married and been with your mom longer than I was on my first first time. And my first time was my um, my high school sweetheart from junior year in high school. Did you learn anything from your first marriage? Yeah, not to get married too early. I got married when I was 21 years old. Well, your grandmother, my mother, told me at the time, she says, don't get married. You haven't sowed your oats yet, your wild oats. And she was so true. Of course, when you're that young and you think you're in love and everything else, you just go, yeah, yeah, mom, I, mean, I don't understand. And you do your own thing. You don't listen. And then later on, when you get wiser, remember I told you when you get older, you get wiser. And wiser is strictly because of the fact that you go through life's experiences. And that's tempered with intelligence, and that makes you the character that you become. 
but you know, I've been blessed, son, because of the fact that I had kids when I was real young. So I get to play with them a lot. And then I had kids like you. And I got to appreciate you more. But with you, you gave me the opportunity to relive parenthood again. So I had the chance to, and the video is all short. How much fun I had with you yeah. and everything else. And everything that I videoed with you since the time you were a baby. I mean, it's amazing how much video we have. With my kids, the first kids, video wasn't big. Cameras were. I had a 35 millimeter camera that I used to take pictures of. I don't know. My ex has the, all the pictures of that, of the Leanne and Scott when they were growing up. I was big into cameras too. But the cameras at that time, they couldn't video. All it was like 35 millimeter film. Yeah. You know, so that's what I had. So I, needless to say, camera was, cameras and videos have been a big part of my life. Because let me, people say, oh, I have pictures of that. And I said, you know what? You take a video and you cannot replace the video. No. You know, photos are fine if you want to blow it up, put a you know, frame on it and do it like this or go through a photo book. But when you're old and gray and you just want to sit down and watch fun videos. I mean, I play some for your mom. Mm -hmm. We just get a kick out of seeing that. Of course, your mom's favorite thing is, oh, he's so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, those. Uh -huh. You're so much in parent mode that you're like, oh, I forgot about that. Yep. I forgot how special, how cute, how adorable it all was mm -hmm. and is. And it's all still adorable, even at your age. What about you, Mom? Did you learn anything from your first marriage that helped you this home? Oh, absolutely. There's always stuff to learn. Yeah, um, she mar she's learned to always marry a Japanese person. Having similar goals and, you know, they always say, and it is true, you're not going to change somebody. Go in, you don't go into a relationship saying, okay, well, this I don't like and I'll change, I'll try to change that person. She's tried that so. several times with me and that ain't working. <laughs> so, similar goals because if you don't have those similar goals, and then, interests. Yeah, and interests, your paths. I mean, how come you guys never had them? kids when you were married? I wasn't, I, I you didn't wasn't, want any. Or I wasn't ready for it. No, I wasn't ready for it, and I wasn't sure as as I as I got through college, and then I'm like, I just has hesitancy about that, and glad did your I ex did. Ex want kids? Not. I mean, at some point, but he. There wasn't any urgency. No, when there, you were... he he never he never <clears throat> had any urgency to do that either. So your so, mom was growing while. He, her ex was not growing. Right. Her ex right. was living in the past and your mom was progressing into the and future. He, you know, and I remember <clears throat> the computers were just coming out yep. and the big cell old, phones. Big old thing. <clears throat> cell phones were Yeah. They were the size of a brick. So I got into phones. real estate out of college. I went right into real estate school. And so I just saw a different professional lifestyle versus his and he didn't have any motivation or didn't ever set goals to reach um, what do you want to what do you want to do in five years did he drink a lot I don't remember if you had no he, he did that after I left him I guess oh. became an alcoholic gained a couple hundred pounds I appreciate you guys from this interview. Oh my gosh, yeah. we that was wonderful. You. That's only a small section. Of yeah, I know we got plenty more to go, but I'll I'll cut this one out here so far. <laughs>